Let's distinguish who we are so people yeah. can tell who's who. Um, talking today with the two filmmakers behind uh, a new documentary called Medora, Davey Rothbart. Yep, this is Davey. And, and over uh, here we got Andrew. Andrew Cohn. Hey there, how we doing? Good. All right. You have a little focus here voice andrew anyway people will figure it out uh, yeah. and this is your host adam shartoff so thanks for co- guys for coming on of course yeah, yeah thanks for having us sure sure medora is the name of the film it's it's opening theatrically let's get this uh housekeeping out of the way it opens theatrically here in new york anyway and and i assume somewhere in yes in- this friday it opens in new york and la mm-hmm. and then next tuesday november 12th it's opening in like it's playing 20 cities around the country oh. for one night special screening all, all over the country, and then it's going to continue to open in different theaters in November and December. Okay. Andrew and I are doing a tour of 20 cities. We're traveling with a couple of the subjects of the documentary. The same ones, or are you going to, uh, different, to different 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 players, the... different uh-huh. kids in different parts of the country. So we're going to San Francisco, Chicago, Boston, Philly, L.A., and uh, the, all around the Midwest, including Ann Arbor, Andrew and I's hometown. We'll, we'll have our, our special Michigan premiere at the Michigan Theater December 12th. And so it's, it's going to be really fun. I mean, very few people have really seen the film yet. And oh, that, yeah. that will change tonight That's and this exciting. week, and it's exciting to finally yeah. get a chance to share yeah. the film with people and, and these kids' stories with people. Right. And we're lucky to do PBS Independent Lens in March. Yeah. Oh, so we're really, man, this is really a, excited about you've that. You've been really, yeah, a lot of people are going to see this film. That's a terrific way of doing it. And we don't even have to talk about the on-demand digital distribution necessarily, although the distributor may not let to hear that. Because you guys are going to be in so many different spots uh, in the next couple of months, I do encourage people to go to the theater and do it because you – not only because it's a great film, but also because it's a filmmaker is taking on a, a kind of a strategy that's still, it's an unproven thing. It's, um, you know, most, of course, conventional ways to do a theatrical everywhere. And, and then if you already have a digital distribution, as well as a broadcast, a TV broadcast, why, why are you doing all these one-offs, you know? But it's, how are you coordinating, first of all, that uh, is there an organization or right. some sort of... Well, Davey and I do a lot of DIY stuff through Found Magazine. And so we took a DIY attitude to making the film. So we figured why not do that in promoting the film? Uh-huh. And so, you know, there's so many great independent theaters that are starving for great films. Why not, you know, why not go there and show the film? And especially people really like to meet the kids afterwards. After you, I love, you know, meeting documentary subjects. It's fascinating to me. Oh, yeah. Because you feel like you know them so well and sure. so intimately. And then you get to see them and say, hey... You know, have you, you know, catch up? <laughs> right, no, no, the audience gets so juiced up after when you bring the people out. Absolutely. I mean, for me, Andrew hit it on the head because for me, I, you know, I live in L.A. and you'll see movie stars at the restaurants or out and about. And I, and I sort of, it doesn't really hit my radar. But when I see a subject of one of my favorite documentaries, I go insane. I get so <laughs> nervous. Right. I get so excited to meet them. Yeah. And so it, it's fun to, to bring these kids around and also just for us to you know you, when you when you work this hard you know a yeah. documentary film as, as all the filmmakers that listen to your your podcast know you know it's it's so much work and it's and and so you you kind of want to be there to share it with people you know we, we work with this american life sometimes and there's this weird thing where you, you put a story out on the radio and mm-hmm. it kind of just goes out into the ether and so to actually be able to be there and kind of sneak peeks at the audience watch people respond to the film it's it's really you know it it's meaningful and it makes you feel it's it's a certain kind of reward that we can get from having finished the film that we're proud of yeah uh so it, how did you coordinate how many independent screenings did you say you're going to do yeah well and we're going to do it'll probably end up being between 20 and 30 okay. and i mean right. a lot of these are theaters that we've had relationships with you know we've We've done Found Magazine events, This American Life events at these theaters. You know, the, the Roxy Theater in San Francisco, right in the heart of the mission, great, great theater. Uh-huh. The Michigan Theater in Ann Arbor. The Music Box in Chicago. Sure. Brattle Theater in Boston. You know, um, some, some places knew about the film. They had maybe yeah. seen it at festivals and invited us to come. Many of them we just reached out to. And, and, um, you know, and, and some we had no relationship with, honestly. Sometimes we, we cold emailed them and said, here's our film. This is what it's about. People are responding to it really wonderfully. Can we come? Itself. Can we come to your? Can yeah. we come to Kansas City and share it at your theater? You know, and and oh, yeah. people have responded to it. That's wonderful. Yeah. So let's talk about the film a little bit. Yeah. What film is this anyway? <laughs> well, okay. Here's the the main plot. It's a year in the life of a struggling basketball team, to say the least, struggling. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they hadn't won fledgling. in years. Yeah. They. This is a team that. Well, it's about a small town, Medora, Indiana, and and then the high school basketball team, the Medora Hornets, a, a team who they they had won a handful of games in the years before we we went, 
And so, you know, we, we talk about how a lot of documentaries are about, you know, a team trying to win a championship. Mm-hmm. Here they were trying to win one single game. But because of that, it was like every game took, out the, took on the intensity and drama of like a championship game. We knew this could be the one game they win all year. And, and really, I, I think of the film as being about, you know, the, what it's like to live in a small town. And, you know, it, what, you know we kind of were posing the question, you know, when, when, as these small towns continue to fade off the map, you know, what is lost? Because they're turning into ghost towns. Medora, Indiana is a stand-in for hundreds, even thousands of small towns around the country that are experiencing the same thing. You know, the factories closed down. The schools. The schools shut down. It becomes, you know, the town kind of liter- quite literally will fade off the map. And so to get into the personal lives of some of these players, learn about the challenges they have at home, you know, to me it's you know, my favorite doc- – our favorite documentaries are, are these raw, intimate documentaries where you really – get a powerful sense of some individual's life and maybe through that person's story there's some greater issues hinted at but yeah. it's not you know an issues doc right i was gonna say, i put the the idea that there was a, a main plot or the plot that's sort of superficial that would be the the basketball team and they're what's their you know up for a big challenge and there's an attention that builds as they are trying to win their game you know and, and which is a metaphor perhaps for hope and and I was going to put it as a, the sub subtext or the subplot is about small hometown America and how it's disappearing, but really it isn't a sub. These two things are inextricably intertwined in this case. Yeah, the basketball team is like a metaphor for the town. Yeah, you know, inability to compete with large and of course this school. You know, there's only 70 kids in the whole school, 12 kids in the graduating class, public high school. Yeah, they're playing schools that are 10, 20 times their size. So obviously. The trend has been people leaving these these small towns to go to bigger cities where there's more opportunity. So what's left behind? And people still live in these towns. And the question Davey and I were asking ourselves is, why do people stay? You know, there's a sense of identity. There's a sense of community. There's something that's lost when these people when people leave. And you know, small town America. I think in some ways it's not just a place. You know, it's it's a um, a state of mind. And it's helping your neighbor and it's people having a role in a community. And you really see that in towns like Medora. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to give people that don't live in towns like this an opportunity through these kids' eyes to understand what it feels like to live in a town like Medora. You mentioned that you're going to be traveling with uh, a number of the, I Mm -hmm. guess now, post high school. Yeah, yeah. They're 19, 20, 21 now, the the kids that were, they were high school students as we filmed, you know, two or three years ago. Yeah. Uh, This will be, I assume, in some of the cases, if not most of the cases, uh, maybe the first opportunity for these guys (laughs) to see the country. Right Right, right now, at this moment, as we're talking, Rusty Rogers, you've seen the film, you know, he's one of my favorites in the film and he's, you know, kind of like the, one of the main players that's featured. uh, You know, he's in the air on his way to New York City. Obviously, rarely been out of Indiana in his life. I don't think he's ever been on an airplane before, and it's going to be really interesting for him to come here. I, I was here last week with Dylan mm-hmm. and uh, wow. Dylan McSoley. He, you know, we took him to the top of the Empire State Building. His mind was blown because it, this town is less than 500 people. And, and honestly, Dylan told me that he gets very overwhelmed when he goes to Bloomington, Indiana. And Bloomington is you know, about an hour north of Medora, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tiny college town. Mm-hmm. It's probably the smallest Big Ten college town. And uh, and he said, and that can be disorienting to him. Weirdly, he took New York completely in stride, and yeah. he was pretty comfortable here. But but when we went to the top of the Empire State Building, and he was able to like look out across the city at one Together. time. He just got really quiet and just took it all in for like twenty minutes, and and just it was it was probably it's like seeing the ocean, the incomprehensible. After yeah, you've been used to the creek, you know. It's like <laughs> I, I would say sharing the experience with the kids has been so rewarding. You know, I mean. Yeah, they're 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 the stars of this movie, yeah. you know, and they're the one that put the people that put themselves on the line in this film, mm-hmm. and so we wanted to make sure to include them in this experience because you know it's a really intimate film, and and for them to put themselves on the line, we wanted to them we wanted them to share this experience, to take it in, to enjoy it, so you know so they can be a part of it, and we took them down to South by Southwest for the premiere. Wow! Um, just to give you an idea, the movie theater that it premiered in held more people than the entire town. That about <laughs> says it, doesn't it? Uh, wouldn't it be Ironic, though, if in traveling around with them that they all decided to leave their town. No, no, it wouldn't. I don't. I'm, I'm just kidding around. I don't uh, know if irony is the <laughs> word. <laughs> it would be, it would be um, <laughs> unfortunate uh, if you guys were that. Uh, well, I mean, the thing is, you know. You're introducing uh, uh, the world to them, pe- in a pe- sense. People do uh, leave. Uh, people so, people yeah, do yeah. leave the town. Right. Some come back to the, to the area. You know, there, there's people in Medora, you know, even if they've moved to Indianapolis, which is, is like the big city, you yeah. know, a couple hours away. Some come back. But I think, you know, our goal is is to 
I, I think to introduce them to a, a wider world. And, you know, I think even, I honestly, I suspect someone like Dylan, I, I don't think he's going to move out of Indiana and move to, you know, Brooklyn and open like a vegan bakery. But, but I think that, I think that just having seen the rest of the world, he'll, he'll have maybe a little more sophisticated approach to his own life and his own mm-hmm. dreams when he comes back home to Southern Indiana. Yeah, I was just going to say, opening their minds more to not not necessarily to a place, but that to the opportunities that might might be out there. You know. Yeah. Where Where are you guys from? We both grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, you're you're from. Uh, now, my question to you guys, coming from, I guess now you you are from a relatively small city. So, embedding yourself. Uh, I mean, in, I, in what I read here, it sounds like that was not a difficult process that they kind of took to you guys, and and you very quickly became. A resource of, of for them yeah. of like finding out the scores from the right or the how the games turned out. Anyway. Yeah, we wanted to embed ourselves in the community. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's, that's necessary. That's, I think you have to to get yeah. that kind of intimacy, you know, with your sure. with your subjects, especially. I have to do it. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, I live in New York. Davey lived in Los Angeles, and we got um, we got uh the rights to make the movie two weeks before the season started. So it was like we had to make a decision real quickly. That you know, we subletted our places and, and moved there. Um, my mom actually is from Indiana, from a town smaller than Medora in Indiana. And so it was nothing new to me to walk into the local bar there or to, to talk with folks there. In Ann Arbor, around Ann Arbor, this town's just like Medora. Oh, you sure. go 20, minute, 20 minutes outside of Ann Arbor. So, you know, I think I think it wasn't new territory for us. You know, well, there's, like the kids that, are in, that go to high school, they're like kids that we went to high school with. Understood. You know? Well, if you go four or five hours outside of New York, it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, did you want to say something, uh, David? No, I mean that? just just that you know people in the town were really incredibly generous about opening their lives to us, mm-hmm. and and you know I think the first couple of weeks they were like you know who are these weirdos with cameras because because you know everyone in a town like that so you notice a stranger's walking around especially a lot of tweeting if going on filming yeah yeah but then um, as we you know quickly surprisingly quickly people got used to the, us they get used to the cameras there's times when the kids have have seen moments in the film they said I don't even remember. You guys filming that, and then they said, "I don't even remember you being there when that happened." It, it's weird how weird. quickly people get used to the cameras being there, and how quickly we became invisible because because yeah. we, we were there all the time. I hear that a lot, actually. Uh, so you made the film. Uh, we we don't want to give away too much about how it turns out. Uh, it's a verite film in a way, so basically life happens. But I mean, the, the ending, however, does. Lend itself. It, it offers. It's oh, here's a here's a fairly substantial way to end the film, right? Yeah. So the, you did a year, right. and it, it, there's a sort of a climax and everything. When you finish the film, assume you had a private screening. Yeah, we were screenings yeah. for for the subjects and exactly. their families, and I wonder how that went. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we were really nervous um, to to share the film with with the subjects. Our, we felt like you know we wanted it to be a film that other people would respond to, but mostly we just wanted to honor the stories and. I mean, really, the courage of the people in this town mm-hmm. in Medora who are, you know, facing such extreme challenges, and yet just in this kind of upbeat way, they just find a way to go on and and keep going. And the basketball team, is, you know, does the same thing. And so we we hoped they would like it. We were really nervous. We we showed it at the at the town library um, the week after South by Southwest, and it was really really nice. I mean, even during the film, I couldn't tell how people were responding. And then it was really, it was really, it was weirdly really quiet. And then just one of the players came up and gave us a big hug and he was like, I loved it. And then, and, and, and other players told us and their families said that they had tears in their eyes, not mm. so much. They knew their own stories and they felt that their own stories, although we dealt with some difficult subject matter, they were, it was all dealt with honestly. They said it was, it was exactly the way it happened. But they said that they were moved by learning the stories of their friends and the mm. other people in the town. They, you know, these are their neighbors. These are their friends, kids they'd grown up with. But they didn't always know ex- the, the nature of, of the challenges facing, you know, their their teammates and their friends. So for them to learn that stuff, that's what they found most moving. And we were just thrilled that they were so behind the film. And it's been fun on, on Facebook. You know, there's the Medora Facebook page in there. And, like, the kids will be posting different, you know, as, as different pictures and different stills will be posted from the uh, – Film, they'll like make fun of each other and mm. and go through. Well, but it's kids, just it's right. nice that they really support it. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be cool to share the film with other people from Southern Indiana. And, yeah. You know, around the country, it'll be great. But there, where people know some of these players and know these families, it'll be especially meaningful. Yeah, and I appreciate um, how you guys avoided 
certain cliche. The characters or the subjects come off um, as real people and and not quite you know more dimensional than you see a lot of uh, depictions of of economically struggling folks these days. It's you know, it's small town America. It's easy to get sucked in. I think yeah. to to you know to be drawn as an because we didn't want it to feel like an outsider's perspective. Yeah, you know it's easy to get sucked into. You know the decay and the yeah. poverty, but that right. you know, as a filmmaker, that re- that wears off real quick. Yeah. You know, people get that that there's economic challenges, the despondency, there. and the yeah. boredom. And and, and mean, to me, there's nothing you know, beautiful about poverty. Right. I think flat out, that's how I that's my view on the world is. There's nothing to be celebrated yeah. about poverty. There's nothing beautiful about it. There, it's it is what it is. And and to me, yeah, the kids, yeah, they're they're facing some tough things, but that's not the point of the movie. The point is that these kids are upbeat. That they have girlfriends, that they go to homecoming, you know, they're not just one thing, you yeah. know, and and, it, and it's important for people to know that just because you may come from a challenging circumstance, that you know you are, you know, that that these people have goals and life, you know, that they're, they're they're more than just a face, you know. We didn't want the movie to just be a face for for you know southern poverty or something like that. Got it. Yeah, actually, just to add one more thought to what you're saying, it's interesting. This is. My, my older brother is a photographer, and he spent a year in Chernobyl um, shooting pictures of, of the people who mm-hmm. remain in the villages around Chernobyl. And he's also been documenting Fukushima in Japan. And, and it, it, he's, he, he notes that you know, all, most pictures you see of Chernobyl are of like the deformed children or of like the doll left in a pile of ash and rubble. And, he, and so it's really nice when you see my, my brother's pictures and see, you know, weddings and stuff like that that happened in the villages so i'm not comparing the nuclear devastation to but in a way there's been a similar like economic meltdown in 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 these small towns and so you know it's like to to give a full portrait of small town life you yeah you you are real about some of the problems but you also you know share the 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 wonderful aspects too yeah i mean i guess the question is how would you live your life if you were in these in this location you know, exactly. and, and so that would maybe add a little bit of a, you know, understanding to how people do go about their lives, <laughs> even against the most struggle, you know, exactly. biggest struggles. Yeah. Thank you, Davy Rothbart and Andrew Cohen. Again, the film is called Medora, and it is um, currently, probably by the time we're speaking, uh, this goes out into the world. It will be theat- playing theatrically and uh, also coming soon to a town near you. That's right. Yeah, the, uh, the, there's a website, which is medorafilm.com. Very good. And if you go to the Medora website, medorafilm.com, we've got the, we'll have happen. the list of all the, the tour cities. And, and also there's one-off screenings all over um, PBS Independent Lens. In addition to broadcasting at Next March, they're doing a series of community screenings in small towns and big cities all across the country March, next March and April. So we'll have all that on the Medora website. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much.